My name is Mrs. Helton and I'm a first grade teacher at Sunnyview Primary. I'd like to use this time to give a big shout out to my first grade friends at Sunnyview. Hey friends, I miss you guys so much and I can't wait to see you, but I'm glad all of you guys are here no matter what school you go to in Knox County. I'm happy to have you here. So I want to use this time before we get started to give you guys some tips in case you need help hearing this video or in case you might need some help understanding this video. So my first tip is to try to turn on your closed captioning if that's something that's available to you. You can also adjust your playback speed to slow down the video. After you have listened at the slower speed, you can then increase the speed and listen to the video again. If these options are something that's not available to you, Consider watching shorter clips of the video, pause, and then listen and watch again. Next, to help you better understand the video, maybe you could ask someone in your home to watch it with you. You guys could stop the video often and talk to each other about what you heard and what you understood from the video. If there is a text or a story associated with the video, you could read that text first, and then you could identify or find the difficult words in that video. That way, when you come across it, you'll know what it means. My last tip is for after you've watched the entire video, to check your understanding at the very end. Write a sentence or create a drawing or a chart to show what you think shows the information from the video. Then you can ask your partner if they agree with what you created. So, now that we can all better hear and better understand this video, let's start over. Welcome everyone. My name is Mrs. Helton and I'm a first grade teacher at Sunnyview Primary. I would just like to welcome everyone to read with me, then we can talk about it and write about it. These are all fun things to me to do, not just because I enjoy them, but because I know that reading, talking, and writing make us all better readers and writers. So let's get started with our assignment. I need some help. I'm trying to solve a mystery. Would you be willing to help me? You know, people who solve mysteries are called detectives or sleuths. A sleuth can also be called a bloodhound. A bloodhound is a type of dog that detectives use to help them track down clues to solve mysteries. So if you're willing to help me, solve this mystery. I will call you the junior sleuth hound and I will be the super sleuth. I need to share a letter that I've written to you, so follow along. The subject of this letter is mysteries. Dear junior sleuth hound, mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be a mystery in a faraway land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So what do you do to solve a mystery? Become a sleuth hound. Look for clues. Ask interesting questions. Then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read this book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck. Do you see any tools on this page that we might be able to use to help us solve a mystery? Yeah, there they are. Think about the camera. How could that be used to help us solve a mystery? Yeah, we could take pictures of our clues and we could look at those pictures later if we need to. What about the keys? How could those help us solve a mystery? Yes, the keys could be used to take us to places that have locked doors that might be hiding secret clues. Could a flashlight help us solve a mystery? Absolutely. The flashlight could help us get a closer look at some clues or help us find clues in darker places. How about a compass? How would that help us solve a mystery? Sure, a compass can help us solve a mystery by helping us find where we need to go 
or helping us navigate our direction on a map. So let's go over our super sleuth steps. That way we know exactly how to solve our mystery. Our first step is to look for clues. Look back through your text and look at the pictures. What do those text clues and picture clues tell you? Write down or draw what you learn from the text and the picture clues. It will help you remember. And look for important ideas and try to put those clues together to help solve the mystery. Our next super sleuth step is ask questions. I know that all great readers ask questions while they're reading to get a better understanding of what they see in the text. Super sleuths ask great questions. Be curious. That means wonder about things and try to find the answers. And try to find out more. The next super sleuth step is to make your case. Now, when I think of the word case, sometimes I think of something like a box or a thing that holds other things that I could possibly put a lid on and carry around. But that's not the type of case we're talking about here. This type of case is when we gather all of our clues together to try to solve something or prove something. So make your case. Look at all the clues and summarize what you know. Use what you learn and already know to think of your own ideas and tell what you think. And the last super sleuth step is the most important. It's prove it. Show what you have learned. When you looked for clues and you asked questions and you made your case, that's how you prove it. Work with others like me or your partner at home and share the adventure. So while we're sharing the adventure, let's get started. We're gonna be talking about treasures in unit four. Now, this may be something that you've already seen in your own classroom, and that's okay, because the more we review it, the smarter we get. So when I think of treasures, I think of something I might find in a treasure chest, like gold, diamonds, silver, but that's not the type of treasure that we're gonna be talking about today. The type of treasure that we're gonna be talking about today has to do with things that you care about, things you treasure, something you want to keep and hold on to because you love it and it's really important to you. So our question to go along with this week's story is, how can a story be a treasure? So think of a story that you really love to hear over and over again. Why do you treasure that story so much? Maybe that story teaches you something. Maybe you learned how to treat others. Or maybe it's a story that makes you so happy every time that you read it. We're gonna be applying this question, how can a story be a treasure, while we're reading our text today. The Shoemaker and the Elves. Now, as I said before, this might be something that you've already read before, and that's okay. I know as a first grade teacher that rereading a text, that means reading the same thing again, makes you so much smarter. It works your reading brain and helps you to become a stronger and more fluent reader, which is a big goal in first grade. So if you've already read this story, it's okay. Read it again with me. You'll only become a more fluent reader. So. Let's get started with the shoemaker and the elves. Let's begin by looking at the picture clues. In the picture, I do see an elf, and the elf is holding a shoe. And at the bottom of the page, I see a lot of shoes. And on the right side of the page, I see someone working on making a shoe. So, our story, The Shoemaker and the Elves, the title is supported by the picture clues that we see. Some pictures are actual photographs, like the person making the shoe, and then some of the pictures are just illustrations that someone made, like the picture of the elf. We're gonna break down this story paragraph by paragraph. A paragraph is just a group of sentences. So each paragraph we're gonna read separately, and we're gonna have a purpose for reading each one. So each paragraph is gonna tell us something that we need to know. Let's get started with paragraph one. In paragraph one, we're gonna be reading to find out 
what the shoemaker's problem is. Now, I know in a story that every story has some type of problem and some type of solution. That makes the story more exciting and it makes it more relatable to real life because we all have problems that need to be solved. Let's read paragraph one to find out what the shoemaker's problem is. Once upon a time, there was a shoemaker. He worked hard, but he and his wife kept getting poorer. Finally, the shoemaker cut out his last bits of leather. He went to bed. He would sew the shoes in the morning. So as soon as I begin reading this story, I hear a familiar phrase. And that phrase is once upon a time, which tells me that this is a made up fairy tale story. Another phrase in the text gives me a clue to help answer our question of what the shoemaker's problem is. Last bits of leather. Hmm. Well, I know you need material to make shoes and leather is one of those materials that shoemakers use to make shoes. If he was cutting out his last bits of leather, that means that these would be the last shoes he makes. And that tells me that that's his problem because he kept getting poorer. And if you don't have any money to buy supplies to make shoes, then you're not gonna have, make any money by selling shoes. So we found the shoemaker's problem. He was getting poorer and he couldn't make any more shoes. Now, let's move on to paragraph two. For paragraph two, we're gonna read to find out what the shoemaker finds. He finds something that makes him a little bit curious, just like we should be. So let's read paragraph two. The next day, he found a beautiful pair of black shoes. Who had made them? The shoemaker sold the shoes. He bought more leather and cut it out. The next day, he found two pairs of shoes. So we were reading to find out what the shoemaker had found. Well, he found a pair of shoes but he really wants to know who made them. We know that he didn't make them because in the first paragraph, he said he would sew the shoes in the morning. But by the time he had already woken up in the morning, the shoes were already made. But the good news is he was able to sell those shoes to get more money to buy more materials to make more shoes. Let's move on to paragraph three. For paragraph three, we're gonna be reading to find out who is helping the shoemaker. Because right now, we don't know. And I would like to know who's helping the shoemaker. So let's get started with paragraph three. Each day, new shoes appeared. Who made them? One night, the shoemaker hid. At midnight, two barefoot and ragged elves came in. They cheerfully made shoes on the square work table. Wow. So there's where the elves come in our story. The elves were the ones who were helping out the shoemaker. Now in our story, we ask the question again, who made them? And the story describes the elves with some adjectives, barefoot and ragged. Now, the word barefoot tells me that the elves didn't have any shoes. And the word ragged describes their clothes, that they may have been old and worn out. So the elves came in and cheerfully made those shoes. So no one asked the elves to help, but they came in to help because it made them happy. So let's get ready to finish our story on paragraph four. And in paragraph four, we're gonna to read to find out how the shoemaker returns the kindness of the elves. The next day, the shoemaker made two tiny pairs of green shoes. His wife sewed two little suits. That night, they hid and saw the elves sneak in. The elves were delighted. They dressed up and danced. Then they left and never returned. 
but the shoemaker and his wife lived happily ever after. So we were reading to find out how the shoemaker returned the kindness back to the elves. What did he do? Well, the shoemaker got to make the elves two tiny pairs of green shoes. And then his wife even sewed them two little suits. So that takes care of the elves problem from the previous paragraph. We read that they were barefoot and they had ragged clothes, but now they have two pairs of shoes and they got new clothes. So they were no longer barefoot and they were no longer ragged. And we can tell that the elves were happy about it because the text tells us that the elves were delighted, which means very happy. And they dressed up in their new clothes and shoes and they danced. I know that I like to dance if I'm happy. So you're gonna get some tasks. Be a sleuth, look for clues. Why did the shoemaker and his wife make clothes and shoes for the elves? Hmm. So look back in your story and see if you can find out why the shoemaker and his wife make clothes and shoes for the elves. Now there are a few ways that you could answer this question. First you could write down the questions or maybe you could ask someone who listened to the story with you and they could answer. The next way to be a sleuth is to ask questions. What do you think the shoemaker would have asked the elves if he could? Now we know that the elves don't think that the shoemaker was watching because he had to hide. So if he was able to talk to them, what do you think the shoemaker would have asked them? Maybe you could use a pencil and paper to write down the ideas of questions that you might have. Maybe you and your partner who read this story with you could role play this story. That means act it out. Then whoever gets to be the shoemaker could ask the elves the questions that you wrote down. That would be fun. Make your case. What lesson can you learn from this story? Hmm. So think back to our essential question that we talked about before we read the story. How could this story be a treasure to you? You know, this story is really a treasure to me because I see that kindness is being spread around, not only by the elves who surprised the shoemaker with the shoes, but by the shoemaker as well, returning the kindness back to someone who was kind to him. So let's review what we've learned today. Today, we have learned how to read like a sleuth by making a case and asking questions and how to do a very good close read. We read our story, or for some of you, it might've been a reread, The Shoemaker and the Elves. We got to talk. Maybe you talked with me, maybe you talked to yourself, or maybe you talked to your partner who's watching with you. How could this story be a treasure? But now you have some tasks to do, and I've explained different ways that you could complete each one of those tasks to go along with this story. But are you ready? I've got a challenge for you. Do you think you're up for it? Here it is. You can write a letter. You could write a letter to the shoemaker. You could also write a letter to the elves. You could talk to them and maybe ask them some questions about why they did those things they did in the story. It would be even better if you could have someone write a letter to you as if you were the shoemaker or the elves and you could respond back to them. Remember the different parts of a letter. The heading, which is the date. The greeting, which is dear shoemaker or dear elves. The body of the letter, which is the part that you write to the shoemaker or the elves. The closing, which is just your friend or sincerely. And then the signature, 
where you sign your name. So that's your challenge today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this time with me. And I hope that you learned a lot and I hope that you reread this story again. I can't wait to work with you again next time. Bye. We are going to practice some grade level phonics skills. Our phonics skill for this week is the vowel team EA. The vowel team EA has three different pronunciations. Remember this sentence when you want to remember all the pronunciations of the EA vowel team. Eat a great breakfast. The long E sound spelled EA as in eat, and the short E sound EA as in bread are the two most common sounds of the EA spelling. So those are the ones we will practice today. Here are some words with the EA pattern that we will see in our text today. Let's decode the words in the first column to practice. Then we will decode the words in the second column to practice. As I look at the first word, I know that I need to identify the vowel or the vowel team first in order to read this word. In this word, it's the vowel team EA. Now I need to think, what does this vowel team EA represent? Well, today we learned that it either represents the long E sound as in eat or the short E sound as in bread. The long E sound is the most common of all three sounds. So I will try that one first. So now that I've identified the vowel team, I'm gonna go back and decode the word by saying the sound that each letter or letter combination represents. J, E, N. Now I will go back and recode the word by blending the sounds together quickly to read the word. Let's try that together. J, E, N, Gene. What's our word? That's right, it's Gene. At the beginning of Gene, I also notice a capital letter. That tells me that this is a proper noun, which is someone's name. Gene is a person. Let's go through our list to decode the other words. What vowel team do you see in the last two words in this column? That's right. Both of these words also have E-A. And they are also going to make the long E sound just like Jean. We're going to use the same process to read these words like we did with Jean. We've discovered the vowel team and now we're going to decode and break down each sound and recode by putting them all together. Let's try the next word. N e o Neil. Just like Jean, Neil also starts with the capital letter, which tells me again, this is a proper noun and it's someone's name. Let's look at the last word in this column. Along with the EA vowel team, I also notice a suffix at the end of the word, ing. Let's decode and recode this word with the vowel team EA and the suffix ing. T, E, Ch, ing teaching let's choose the next column to decode first we know we have to identify our vowel sound what do you see in the second column that's right ea but the ea in this column is different from the ea in the first column the ea in this column makes the short e sound eh like in bread. So let's go back and decode these words to read them. E, D, S, heads. The S at the end of heads makes this word plural or it means more than one. Let's decode our last word. D, E, D, dead. Now that we've decoded and recoded 
all five of these words that we're going to see in our text today. Let's go back and just read them. Jean, Neil, teaching, heads, dead. Good reading, everyone. Now we will move on to our high frequency words. These are our sight words for this week that we are going to practice. Now, these are words that you should have already seen and that you probably already know, but we know how important it is to reread words, even if we already know them, in order to grow our reading brains. So, I'm going to read the words first, and you can listen to me. Then we will read the words together. And last, I will let you read the words by yourself. Listen to me as I read the words first. Colors, draw, over, sign, drew, great, show. Okay, friends, now you are going to read the words with me. Ready? Colors, draw, over, sign, drew, great, show. Awesome work. It's your turn now. You read the words and I will listen. Ready? Go. Good reading. Those are our sight words that we will see in our text today. Here is our text. It contains the EA words and the sight words that we just practiced. I will underline the EA words as we come across them in the text and the sight words are already highlighted in yellow for you. Let's begin our story. Sunday, we will put on this great show. Jean will draw a sign and hang it up over her gate. Neil drew a stage set with many colors. This show will star my puppies and Jean's bunnies. Jean has tried teaching her bunnies to hop. My puppies bumped heads when they tried to play dead. This will be fun. I want to remind you all what to do in order to practice being a fluent reader. Fluent readers do a few things. First, they read smoothly. It sounds like your speaking voice. Fluent readers also read accurately. That means that you read each word correctly. And last, fluent readers read with expression according to what words and punctuation are in the text. So if you have this text in front of you at home, take time to practice it every day to practice becoming a more fluent reader. You can practice reading to yourself, reading to a parent, a sibling, or maybe even practice reading to your favorite stuffed animal. Please use this text each day to practice being a more fluent reader. 